You may encounter situations while analyzing data where some of your data are missing. This chapter will cover best practices in regards to handling these situations, as well as the technical details on how to remedy the data. Missing data will often be represented by either NA or just a blank value in R. Sometimes you'll be able to manage by just ignoring this data. However, other times you will need to impute the missing data. This just means you end up coming up with a value that makes sense to use in place of the missing data. The three imputation methods we're going to cover in this chapter are constant value imputation, central tendency imputation, and multiple imputation. Let's start by covering common methods and formulas for identifying and isolating missing data. So to begin our example, let's create a vector with one blank value and a vector with one NA value. So that first vector, it'll contain John, Jane, and then empty quotations for a blank value. We'll save that as a vector named blank. And then the second one, we'll have Jane and Joe. And then one value is just NA, which is not applicable. And we'll save that vector as NAs. OK, let's run that. Oops. Let's run that. And then let's print out blanks to see what that looks like. OK. And then let's print out the NAs to see what that looks like. All right, so we'll notice the first one, it returns blank quotes, and then the second one returns the NA value. Okay, so we can also use the is.na function to identify data with NA values. So let's try that out on the vector we just created. So we have is.na, and then we pass in NAs. Let's hit enter. And we'll see that we get a vector that contains true, false, false. So that correlates with these three values. We can take that one step further and use the function to filter for NAs, NA values. So let's try that out. So here we're taking NAs and filtering by values uh, that are NA and storing the resulting data in a function or in a variable called only NAs. So let's run that and then print it out. See if that'll run. Okay, so it looks like we filt filtered out that vector and all we're left with is only one NA value. Oh, there we go, it ran again. So that works great, but it's more likely that we would want to see the values which aren't equal to NA. So we can build on some stuff we've done in previous chapters. So we're doing the exact same thing, except we're adding this exclamation point to negate this is.na function. So we want everything that isn't NA. So let's run that and see what we get. And we see we get the opposite data. So if our data is just an empty string, or if our missing data is just an empty string instead of the NA value, we can use comparison operators. So that'll look like this. So that looked at this first vector up here bring it down here. So if you remember, we created a vector named blanks, contains John, Jane, and then an empty string. And then what we did down here is we said, check to see which of those values are blank. And it output false, false, true. So let's take that a little bit further. Let's run that. So we took the blanks value, filtered where blanks is equal to an empty string, stored it in a variable named only blanks, similar to what we did up here with the NAs, and see that it returned only the blank value. So when working with data frames rather than just vectors, we can also use a function called na.omit. Uh, and that'll remove complete rows with NA values. So let's see what that looks like. 
and start by clearing all this out. Okay, so we create a vector named students with John, Jane, and Joe, a vector with scores with 180 and NA. And then we create a data frame with those vectors, uh, with those two vectors being our columns. So let's run that, print it out. Actually, let's clear this out so we have a blank slate. Okay, so we have a data frame. It's got three students. And then two of them have scores, and one has an NA, has a missing value. So let's run the na.omit function and see if we can't get rid of that. So you'll notice it omitted Joe from the data frame completely. So it took any row which had an na value in any of the columns and just dropped that row entirely. All right, next we're going to cover constant value imputation. So many data sets you encounter will likely be missing data. And the temptation may be to immediately disregard these Im imputations and remove them from the data set. But it's important to consider what that missing data represents in the context of your data set, as well as the context of what your analysis is hoping to achieve. So an example is if you were a teacher and you're trying to determine the average test scores of your students, uh, let's say you have a data set which lists all of your students' names along with their respective test scores but we find that one of our students has an NA value in place of a test score. So kind of what we just did. All right, so depending on the context, it may make sense for us to ignore that observation like we did in the last example. Um, it could also make sense for us to assign a value of zero to the student's test score. So maybe that NA means the student didn't take the test and your policy is any student that didn't take a test gets a zero automatically. So let's start by running this and print out what we've got. So we've got our data set where John got 100, Jane got an 80, and Joe didn't show up to take the test. So we want to give Joe zero. So we'll say, take our data frame, and any, any value in the data frame which is in a where we want to replace with the zero value and then let's run that and print it out we'll see now joe has a zero so if you're a teacher and you wanted to start calculating average test scores now you have a data set that you can start working with all right next is central tendency imputation two of the most common measures of central tendency are mean and median so if we have a data set that tracks the time employees spend performing a certain test, task and we review it and we realize that several employees have not historically tracked their time. And instead of just ignoring these entries, we wanted to impute them so we don't skew the data. So we've got a vector with John, Jane, Joe, and Janet. And we've got another vector with hours spent. And we've got 12 for John, 14 for Jane. Joe is missing data. It's historically, Joe did not track his time. And then Janet has nine hours. We'll create a data frame from those vectors. And let's just run that and see what it looks like. Okay, so we already decided that for whatever reason, we don't want to just ignore Joe's values. We want to give an imputation there. Um, let's do the average for Joe. Okay, so what we're doing here is we're taking the data frame and specifically the hour spent column and filtering it for anything that isn't in A. And then we're assigning that result to a variable called mean value. And then we're going to print that out. So that means that our mean value for John jane and janet is 11.7 11 and we can just test that real fast let's say 12 plus 14 plus 9 divided by 3 and it looks like it worked okay now we want to actually replace the joe's na value with this average value that we just calculated we can do that with this. 
So now we're filtering the hour spent column. And instead of filtering for everything that's not in A, we're filtering for everything that is in A and then assigning it to the mean value. So we'll go ahead and run that and print it out and see what it looks like. And now we see Joe has a value that's equal to the average. Um, alternatively, we can reset the data frame and replace NA values with the median value if we didn't want to do the average for some reason. And here's an example of that. Okay, so we're going to reset that hour spent column print out the data frame just to make sure that worked. Okay, so Joe has a missing value again. And then we're doing the same thing here. Except instead of calculating the mean like we did up here, now we're calculating the median. Now we want to actually go in and replace that missing value again. So same as before, except we're assigning a median value instead of a mean value now. And Joe has a value of 12. And then last, we're going to cover multiple imputation. So all of the previous examples were types of single value imputation because those examples took one value and applied that value to every missing value in the data set. At a very basic level, multiple imputation requires users to come up with some sort of model to fill in missing values. So each missing value is considered on a case-by-case -case basis. So we're going to go over an example where we demonstrate how you might use a simple linear regression model to perform multiple imputation. And just as a side note, we're going to cover linear re regression more in depth later on in the course. So if this is completely unfamiliar to you, don't worry about it. So let's start by creating a numeric vector with some missing values in it and then another one with no missing values. And we'll use those vectors to create a data frame. Let's print it out. So we've got X and Y as our column, and Y has some missing values. Um, next, we're going to use a function called LM to create a linear model, and then we'll print out a summary of that model real quick. So we'll run this line, and then we'll run this line. Okay, so here's the summary of our model. Like, like I said, don't get caught up in this too much. It's just an example, and we'll go over it more in depth later in the course. But looks like at a high level, we have a model that seems to be statistically significant. Um, so we're going to go ahead and use this model to fill in all of our missing values in the data set. Um, so here is our example. So we're going to create a, a new vector called imputed. And we're going to predict some values based on that model we just created. So uh, don't worry about the syntax too much. But basically what we're doing is we're using the x values and taking those x values to predict what y should be where y is equal to na. Uh, and we can see that imputed ends up with two values in it, which makes sense because we have two NAs. And then now we need to filter those Y values, assign all the NA values to imputed. And then we'll print that out. And it looks like it worked. And just at a really high level, all this is saying is since our intercept is two, we're going to say two plus X times one. And let's just make sure that works. So our first NA value is line three, and our second one is line six. So two plus one times x, or six, is eight. And then, oh, sorry. We should be doing line three. So two plus one times nine is 11, which makes sense. And then two plus one times 12 is 14. So looks like that worked just fine.